What's up, guys? It's Joey KO. I got Mixed Marshall Mike in the building. This time around, we're talking about the top five most underappreciated Puerto Rican fighters in both MMA and boxing. You know, mostly it's going to be boxing because there's a lot of Puerto Rican boxers. More Puerto Rican boxers than there are Puerto Rican MMA fighters. Boxing is the number one sport in our island, so... Here we go, man. Number five. Let me at least say something. Before the list starts, we want to explain just a little bit what an underappreciated fighter is. Most of this list is going to be compiled of fighters who have accomplished a lot. Some are up and comers. Some are multiple divisional defending champions. The value that they have earned is not what the perception is. From a box office perspective, or maybe the fans' perspective, or the fighters' perspective, just underappreciated in that way. So let's go. All right, number five, we're gonna go with Gabe Rosado. Even though Gabe doesn't have the best looking record, there's been a lot of close fights, especially recently at the high level when he fought Danny Jacobs, uh, Luis Arias, fights like that where he could have easily won. He does have wins over Joshua Kaladi, a former world champion. He started fighting at a high level very early on. Mm. So when you're fighting at the at the highest level, especially when he was inexperienced, he turned pro with very little amateur experience. His experience was fighting big name opponents very early in his career. Yeah. And me being a big fan of MMA structure, I got to give Gabriel Rosado a lot of credit for that because it's not necessarily your amount of losses when your resume is stupendous and you fought pretty much everybody in front of you, even people you, they didn't expect in the fight like Golovkin. This guy's pretty much fought absolutely yeah. everybody. In his last fight, Daniel Jacobs had a great um, fight against Rosado and I believe Rosado won that fight. You thought um, Daniel Jacobs won the fight, but let's just say there's a decent amount of people that agreed with me that he did win the fight. So he is a guy no, who he, fought the best. It could have went either way. That was definitely a toss-up fight. Um, he, he did great against the Arias fight too as well. We're going to move into the number four spot. We're going to give that to Luis Calazo because I feel like Luis Calazo is a damn legend. He's for everybody. Early on in his career, he took on Shane Mosley and he got robbed against Ricky Hatton. That was one of the big things. He had a close fight with Berto and he's always shown up in, in some of the biggest fights. Remember when he knocked out Victor Ortiz? And even though he's had this roller coaster career at a high level, for and the undercard of the Floyd Mayweather fight against Amir Khan and, and all this. I don't feel he gets the recognition and respect that he deserves. Even recently, got into a pretty good win streak and did not get a title shot. Ended up losing his last fight and uh, just felt like he, he definitely should have got more love, especially from the Puerto Rican community because he, he did his thing. He had a great career. I do remember you always mentioning Luis Calazo as a guy who was always underappreciated from the very moment he was robbed against Ricky Hanno. You felt he was robbed against, he, he, he should have won that fight against Ricky Hanno. So um, I do believe Luis Calazo is one of the greatest fighters in the last 10 years at welterweight. And he's just never really been given that recognition if it wasn't for injuries or if it wasn't for um, losing very close fights or not fighting consistently enough. He just hasn't reached the the, the, the pinnacles that we, we, we believe he could have reached, you know? Because he's accomplished quite a lot. After that, we're going to go with the number three spot. We're going to give that to Jose Pedraza because even though he's a multiple world champ, a multiple division world champion, but he just doesn't really get the respect I feel he deserves from the Puerto Rican people. And part of it was when he was first coming up, people thought that he was a good fighter, but not you know, didn't have the potential to be a great fighter, but I feel like he's currently the number one best Puerto Rican fighter active right now mm. as far as resume and the level that he's competing against. Well, according to BoxRec, he is considered the number one Puerto Rican, and Pedraza did compete very adamantly against both Javante Davis and Lomachenko, and I would argue it's not even his fault. He's underappreciated. He's just in one of the most popular, most dense divisions in all of boxing right now. The amount of up-and-coming beasts 
that are actually pretty box office or very interesting in a mainstream way in that division that I do believe is quite understandable that he's underappreciated and he's probably more accomplished than Rosado and the previous entries in this list. Joey K really wanted him on this list and I think deservingly so he very much deserved to be on this list. Multiple division world champion who's fought the best and gave Lomachenko hell. He, in, in my opinion, he was winning the fight with Tank Davis before he got knocked out. And he beat some very good fighters, even in the early going, when he knocked out, uh, you know, Tevin Farmer. And he mm. was coming up and became the world champion, beat Edna Cherry, mm. and, you know, kept winning. And, and Ray Beltran, the, the Ray Beltran's very dangerous opponent, he beat him and became a world champion in the second division. So and that was his defense. Like, he defended, he won the vacant and he defended against Ray Beltran. So he's definitely a very legitimate fighter. And I think that was a great one you added to this list. Yeah, he definitely deserves more credit, but we're gonna move on. Cause now we get into the front of this list and we got Rob Font on mm. this list. Mm. He's the only MMA entry because it's not like you said, it's not a lot of Puerto Rican MMA guys, but he's definitely on a title run. He just 19 and 4 has fought nothing but the best for a while now. He just dominated Cody world. Garbrandt, right? So I I really wanted MVP. him on this list because of the fact that MMA hasn't really had a pure born or even a full born Puerto Rican or maybe a New Yorkican maybe because he's from New York or Massachusetts actually. Ralph Foss from Massachusetts so we haven't had an American born or even a native born Puerto Rican champion that was completely Puerto Rican. We did have Eddie Alvarez who was half Irish half Puerto Rican. We had Anthony Perez who was half Puerto yep. Rican half Mexican. half Mexican. We did have Rico Rodriguez who was an MMA fighter so the history is there and we are at the top but Ralph Foss has you know that he has the potential to become the first full-born Puerto Rican champion in UFC history. And he, you don't really hear a lot of people talking about him. Maybe it's because his name doesn't sound Puerto Rican enough, Rob Font. And he's know. entertaining as hell. His yeah. fight's fucking And there's no, it's, exactly. Puerto Ricans, we love the hands. We love the fisticuffs. And that's what he brings to the ring, to the octagon. So he does fight like a Puerto Rican, has the attitude of a Puerto Rican, and he's one of only many Puerto Rican fighters that actually likes to represent the flag in the UFC broadcast. So you know he had to get credit here, and I know we're only a few people talking about this guy, so he's definitely number two. Yeah, and and similar to Pedraza, his losses came at a very high level as well. Great point. Now we're gonna move on to the number one person on our list. And it's crazy because we was contemplating and then we realized, yeah, that she really is underappreciated when you think about it. Amanda Serrano deserves fully to be appreciated. And I think it's hard to understand and really put in the back of your mind, well, she is underappreciated because uh, she she's done so star. much. Exactly. Yeah, she should be. Right. She's dominating divisions, has the most world title, uh, most division championships in Puerto Rico boxing history. Serrano's definitely uh, someone who should be a bigger star than what she is. She is a star, but she should be a superstar. She does have, you know, the, the record for most division championships, world championships and multiple divisions for Puerto Rico. Of all genders and, too. Of, of yeah. all genders. We're not just saying female. Yeah, she, she surpassed the, everybody. She the, has the number the one division. Benitez, the Trinidad's, the Miguel Cotto, she surpassed all of them. And I just feel like she should definitely be on more headliners. It should be a bigger thing, more celebrated. I don't know if it's because she's a female in boxing doesn't quite promote the female boxers quite the same but, but she is she is not to the mma oh yes i was just about to say that she me, is, me uh, and joey can think of the one same thing she's one and oh she's right? one and oh and her second fight is coming up she's training with paul gonzalez um, paula gonzalez who's who's pretty famous she's a very beautiful woman she's a she, i think she's crossing over to boxing so i think in a way they're helping each other no she's in bare knuckle fc and i think she's gonna fight uh Paige Van Sant and, and Bare Knuckle FC. So Amanda Serrano's teaching her the hands and she's teaching her the MMA. So that's a beautiful story. I love the transition. And just for that alone, 
that deserves so much credit and kind of shows you she's underappreciated because there is no male boxers currently that have been willing or maybe incentivizes the better word to go over to MMA because the money's in boxing for male fighters. But the money in MMA, I mean the, the money, the female money is in MMA. So that's why you're gonna see a lot of boxers crossing over the MMA. So I think Amanda Serrano minimally should be as famous as um, Amanda Sor um, as Amanda Nunes. So Amanda Serrano, Amanda Nunes, those names can ring a bell at the same level to me. And, and Clarissa Shield too. You think about and, yeah, it. Yeah, if it was Clarissa an overall list, also switching to make your point, she's switching sports as well. And uh, I don't know if they're gonna go back and forth. I probably advise them not to, but no, they are going back and forth. To watch. That's what she did. She didn't stop. She didn't do the Holly Home. She is. This is what it tells you that maybe her bread and butter is boxing. Her money is in boxing. Her MMA collateral, her MMA upbringing is still still growing. She still has much to to do in MMA in order to get the same kind of recognition. But I guarantee yeah. you, if she gets to the UFC, woof. It's going to be so miraculous. The amount of people that are going to know her or learn of her overnight, it's not even shocking. She's going to be on ESPN, the UFC. And there's already a certain level of credibility that the UFC has allowed the women to have. The UFC treats women exactly the same. The same rules, the same gloves, the same everything. The only difference is that they got a bra. That's it. They're treated the same. So... The fact of the matter is, Amanda Serrano is trying her best to fight everyone in front of her. She's going to fight Katie Taylor, I guarantee you. They both want to fight each other. They're both very respectful of each other. And Amanda Serrano is, without a doubt, the number one under underappreciated Puerto Rican just because of the fact that I just told you a huge resume. How many other things do I got to say? She des I'm sweating trying to argue that she deserves to be appreciated. So she's definitely number one in my eyes. Yep, and, and and it's not that she's not a star, but like we said, I think we both agree that she should be bigger than what she is currently. So that's our list right there, man. Tell us what you guys think. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Peace out, y'all.